Hi, today we're looking at a Ramtex Space Invaders Stroke Blockbuster game. Um, I've looked on YouTube and I haven't really seen any other people repairing or anybody else uh, repairing one of these before. So I think they're actually quite rare. Now, I purchased it on eBay, Spares or Repair. So let's have a look and see what we've got. It looks like this is a replacement battery cover that somebody's made. Out of a different thing, I think, by the look of it. Yeah, somebody's made that with a bit of plastic there. The uh, battery terminals look in a bit of a state. They look quite corroded. So I think they're going to need a sort a sorting out. It's actually quite uh, quite grubby as well. I think it needs a, a taken apart and probably a good clean. So I think the first thing what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take the back off and we'll have a look inside. Now I'm not sure what uh, the manufact what the year of manufacture of this game was because on some websites. It says the 19, late 1970s and on some it says 1980s so I'm not sure when it was actually manufactured but let's see how this circuit board comes out. a ribbon cable I think holding that in yeah, I'm trying not to uh, try not to break it there's a bit of a bit of sellotape or something knocking about in there just get that out I don't know if I've, I don't know if somebody's had this apart before or not because there's it looks like there's supposed to be two screws holding the display panel in but there's none at the bottom there's only the two at the top here so I'll see if I can get these two um, screws out and then hopefully I'll help you to get the uh, circuit board out. see very 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 tiny little LEDs look like the solder directly onto the uh, display board here and we've got um, two bubble seven segment LED displays under there as well the uh, power switch and the on off switch look quite grubby uh, I can see a couple of chips here. There's a MC1402. That looks like the small chip there. There's a, an array of transistors. So I guess this is some kind of driver. And the big chip there, it's a PIC microcontroller by the look of it. Uh, PIC. 16 double five A. I'm not sure what this uh, ribbon cable's for there. I wonder if that goes to the. Oh, that might go to the, the sub board here for the switches. They'll probably need taken out. What I might do is undo this um, little piezo buzzer there so I don't pull the wires off that. Uh, and see if we can get these um, switches and other things out to give them a clean. So, actually, it's got a. Um, just noticed here, yeah, it's got the um, the logo on the circuit board there. Uh, Ramtex. If 
you can see that there because it's half under the ribbon cable ram texan it looks like i don't know if that's an r or an e e i m one five zero four i think that says might be possibly a few dry joints around here as well we might need to touch that up it looks like somebody's actually gone over the uh display side there possibly previously it's just like a few of the joints around the top here just look uh don't look quite the best but right <coughs> i'm gonna disable oh, sorry unsolder these uh speaker wires there and get that out of the way and i'm going to unsold that these power wires i think we need a bit, a bit fresh solder on there because it's quite corroded buttons off I'll come and slide this panel out nice down on one side there all right so these are quite actually badly corroded springs broken on that one it looks like somebody's had to go possibly soldering some new bits on there on a piece of tin and the um, the ones that come out that go to the uh, battery are quite severely corroded as well. Yeah, somebody's uh, tried to make one and super glue it together. Now what I was thinking, possibly with this, uh, I'm sure I've got a battery holder of an old, let's see that set of Christmas lights or something knocking about somewhere, uh, and I might see if I can take the uh, the metal contacts out of that and see if they'll fit in there. Right, so that's the... Uh, that's what I'm possibly thinking for a, a donor, a donor part. So I'll see if I can get these out and then we'll see if we can get one of those to fit in. I've removed all the old contacts uh, out of the battery compartment. As you can see, they're, uh, they're all quite corroded. I'll just uh, bring them a bit closer to the camera so you can yeah so that's what the uh the contacts were like so i've taken them out the i've also taken the ones out the uh the donor battery compartment they were a bit wide so i've uh, used the angle grinder just to grind them down a sliver and i've fitted the two new ones in the bottom already where the wires will attach so we should be to slide one in there now and we should be to slide one in here like so now the battery compartment the donor one was only for three cells and the uh the one on the game is four cells so i actually haven't got enough replacement terminals so I think I'm going to have to reuse this one here 
which uh, is not ideal but it's all we've got at the moment so I think it'll have to do for now and hopefully that should work so what I'll do is I'll get some batteries we'll put some batteries in there and then we'll see if we get any voltage on these terminals on the back right so I've put some batteries in let's see if we get any voltage on the terminals now Yes, 6.4. Right, so the battery compartment seems to be working now. So I think what we'll do. I'll see if the front cover can go back on. Doesn't seem to be the best fit, but it's all we've got to work with at the moment, so right, that's one part of it fixed anyway. Then. I think what I'll do is I'll clean the bench up a bit and then uh, we'll have a look at the circuit board. Right, bench is a little bit cleaner now. I think what I'm going to do is go over a number of these uh, solder joints because some of them don't look in the best condition, so I think we'll just go over a lot of them. I think that's uh, that's pretty much them all. The rest of them actually look all right, so I think we've done the majority of them. Now I think I'll clean this uh, this input board up a bit because it looks uh, rather grubby. So I'll get some switch cleaner on it and a cotton bud. And we'll see, uh, well the contacts on the bottom look alright. We'll see if we can get a bit switch clean actually into the contacts. Screen a bit of a clean. I don't really want to use any uh, isopropyl or anything on this just in case we uh, take any of the graphics off it. Obviously the graphics are just screen printed on so we don't want to uh, dissolve any of those off. It's a little bit scratched as well, it's a pity about that. I mean we could have used something, if it had been uh, if the print had been on the inside or something. We could have used some uh, brasso or something to try and to try and remove the uh, scratches, but like I said, I'll just take the paint off. I'm just going to try a little bit on this corner just to. Right, 
do. I've uh, cleaned the two buttons up as well because they were quite grubby. So I've had those in the sink with some soapy water. And I've cleaned the outer casing a bit as well with soapy water. So. Yeah, I'm not sure why this has been apart previously because I'm sure there should be two screws in here as well to hold the display on. Ramp Text Revision 2 ET8001. Actually, I'm going to clean those two as well. Yeah, those are very grubby. I think we need to try and get some switch cleaner into those. Just check we've got these uh, put the wires on the right way around I think the bottom was the positive yeah actually I'm going to be doing them wires because they look a bit uh, not the best as well Yeah, these wires aren't the best. They're quite black. I think the uh, alkali of the batteries travelled up them and... I need to say they're not nice and shiny anymore. So I think I might replace these two wires. Right, I shall grab some wire and back in a mo. Right, we've got a couple of bits of wire that I've just tinned. So. Uh, I need to put the speaker back on, don't we? Right. This part of the back's actually a little stand. You uh, slide that bit out like that, and it apparently uh, makes it stand up. Right. Let's turn the light off so you can. Uh, Maybe to see it a bit better. Right, looks like there's a couple of the uh, LEDs off on the bottom row here. That's just when I'm moving the uh, character. And you can see the character there, when I press right, it disappears. Press right again, you still can't see it. And then it appears there. All the other lights on. Uh, looks like the top row is working. I don't know if there's a row in between here or not. All those ones appear to be on. Let's try, see if the breakout game works. Right, 
Okay, so those rows work as well. So it looks like there's two LEDs at the bottom here aren't working. So I think we'll uh, have a look, see if we can fix that problem. Right, so I've got it apart again. And I'm just going to have a look at this circuit board under the uh, microscope just to see what's going on. So I'll bring the microscope in and we'll have a look to see if we can see what the problem is. Right, so. Right, that's one of the working LEDs. That's another one of the working LEDs. Looks like they're uh, bonded straight onto the uh, onto these gold trucks. Now, I think the raw that uh, we're having the problem with is here, and we can see that that bond wire isn't connected. see that one is but that one isn't and that one isn't now I'll have a go to see if we can solder those wires on but I'm kind of not holding me breath and if we can't, well, what we could possibly do is see if we can obtain some uh, small surface mount LEDs and replace them with those. So, but we'll have a go. We'll see what happens. Now, it's rather tricky this because literally, if, uh, as I'm moving, this whole thing like you see the, the size of my trees as they compared to that wire I'm gonna try to use a dental pick I've got a, a dental pick here with a small the smaller end, <laughs> when I say smaller end, it's like a nail compared to this. I'll try the other end because I think it's slightly smaller. Get some solder on that pad. I don't think the pad wants to take any solder on.
nice. Well, I think that might have it. <laughs> right. One more to do. Well, this isn't easy. I think what I'll do, I'll uh, tin the pad on this one first before we we'll start moving the wire around. Right. right, we'll see if we can manoeuvre the wire into it, we'll see if I can get a little bit better in focus here. Not sure whether that's got it or not. Aha! It appears to be working. These LEDs are so tiny. Right. Okay then. <laughs> well, that was a bit uh, a bit tense. I don't know how it was for you guys, but it was a bit tense for me. <laughs> right. Um, we'll see if we can uh, get it back together now. Then. Right. So it's all back together now. So we'll give it a test. Well, that's the Space Invaders mode. This is the uh, Breakout mode. It's actually quite hard to control of the layout of the buttons and um, Well, there we have it. 
the uh, Ramtex Invader and Blockbuster all fully working again well that was a bit intense at times with those uh, surface mount LE well not even surface mount I think they were just uh, just die straight onto the circuit board with their very 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 small tiny wires but well if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more like it please consider subscribing and any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and as always have a great day thanks for watching